welcome on in. Thanks for joining for this June's astrology and in this segment I am going to cover love and romance relationships. As many of you know, I have two other segments that I can't put here on YouTube because it's too hot. <laughs> it's too hot for YouTube. So I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But um, let me say, you know, coming into this month, we've got a lot of Mars and Aries, Jupiter energy. So people wanting to go, 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 you know, um, and we've got Mercury going direct in Taurus. So um, right, it's coming out of retrograde um, after on the third. So after having been in retrograde for about what a month now. So yeah, I think um, communications are going to open up. And this month, you know, we've got a lot of lunar energy involving Gemini, Sagittarius, and then we start easing into Cancer, lunar energy, and the next month, Capricorn, right? So these are a lot of energies having to do with the facts versus faith. And as we, as the month progresses, we get more into this lunar energy of, you know, security issues, emotional security with Cancer, which is a huge theme overall this month. Um, but then, then we get into the financial security, okay? So, um, things are going to continue, though, to slow down, all right? Hey, we made it out of eclipse season. I hope you made it okay. I know it's pretty nutty for some people out there, okay? I was fortunate, even though I've got, you know, a lot of fix. I'm an Aquarius uh, sun and a Taurus rising, and I know the fixed signs were hit the hardest, which would be Leo and Taurus and Aquarius and Scorpio, right? Definitely Scorpio's got hit. Um, I managed to do well, but I, I was, there's a lot going on around me, external to me. I could definitely feel it. So it might feel like things are speeding up because of Mars coming into this month and us getting out of Mercury retrograde, but don't get too excited if that excites you because it, things are going to start really slowing down a lot more um, with Pluto still retrograding Capricorn this month. I should say coming into this month. And, but then this particular month, we have Saturn going retrograde in Aquarius, Neptune going retrograde in Pisces, and that's, you know, going to be affecting us over the next five months. So, yeah, catch a breath. Um, and definitely with us coming out of eclipse season, uh, pick up the pieces, recover. Now, those of you who want to know about love, relationships, I'm going to give you some highlights, okay? And then those of you who have more time, want to stick around longer, we're going to get into important dates. By the way, I, I neglected to mention, I, I hope you enjoy the outdoors here. I want to get outside. Maybe it's the uh, Mars and Aries energy. I don't know. I want to get outside, but we had a cold front come in and my eyes just water, water, water every time I do this. And so it's something in the air, seasonal allergies probably, and plus the wind is blowing and I wanted to spare y'all of that. So I hope, I hope this works for y'all. Okay. The highlights this month for love and relationships. Well, when it comes to others, this is going to be a really good month to open up lines of communication, to have good quality conversations with people, improve relationships, especially if, you know, it's involving family, if it's involving women as the month progresses, right, we're coming into a lot more cancer energy, which is about home, family, mothering, okay? This is also a month where you could get more opportunities to develop stronger emotional ties, regardless of what kind of relationship it is, or regardless of gender, right? And if there have been, if there has been instability in relationships from last month and the month prior, eclipse season, right? Totally understandable. Well, this is a good month to work on letting go of any bad habits or patterns that have been hindering fulfillment in those relationships. Now, in terms of working on yourself, your relationship with yourself, right? We can't overlook that. That's an important relationship. Well, good month for self-awareness and working on creating more emotional security within yourself and getting more in tune with your own emotional needs which may involve having to reconcile your dreams, wishes, hopes with reality. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's almost like I'm we're back in Pisces season in March. I know I was talking a lot about that in, you know, um, Pisces season in March. But here we are again with this because of this, you know, Cancerian watery type of, of energy. But this time around, it's more about, yeah, security issues, okay? Not necessarily just this the idealism of Pisces but getting down to earth okay how do we really get a sense of security on an emotional level when reality is uh, maybe triggering insecurities within us and if you are single and dating this is going to be a good month to meet people and uh, because you know 
look of all the Gemini energy. Let me say, smart is sexy. Okay, okay. Definitely with uh, Venus and Gemini this month. And not only is smart sexy, it's a good month to get your flirt on. Or you might find somebody flirting with you. So before we get into talking about the important dates for this month, let me remind you that due to YouTube censorship, I am putting part two and part three on my censorship free platforms, BitChute and Odyssey. And yeah, part two is going to be covering the astrology in terms of career, finance, basically the economy. Um, and then part three will be about the world at large, basically politics. And I put a lot of work into that content because when I say stuff, I usually will cite the source and I'll give you a visual. I'll give you like a news clipping on the screen so you can actually see what I'm talking about, okay? I'm not just talking, talking, you can see what I'm talking about. And so um, quality content that if you're only on YouTube, you are not going to get because it's just too hot for this platform. Yeah, I'm gonna say it like that. <laughs> and um, if you want to see more of my uh, content, then make sure you're subscribed because those of you who are just interested in relationships, well, as you know, I go live on YouTube every full and new moon. And those of you who are interested in politics, well, I've been starting to put out week ahead reports with political tarot here on YouTube. So make sure you are subscribed and you've activated the bell for notifications so that you get notified of when I release that content. Okay, let's talk about those important dates. Well, on June 3rd, we have Mercury going direct in Taurus. And so, you know, communication difficulties could be clearing up. That's the good news. The not so great news is that, you know, it's coming out of retrograde in Taurus, which, you know, could make things a little sluggish, a little slow to get going, okay? Um, Mercury's been retrograde since May 10th. So, and, and it, it went, it was in retrograde in Gemini and Taurus. So during this time frame of roughly the last month, you might have been reconsidering some issues having to do with your own comfort and security and maybe reflecting on projects, personal interests. Now, hopefully coming out of this time frame with more clarity to take decisive action. And on the positive, if you were hoping for lines of communication to open up, well, it probably will from this point forward, but people will likely be more focused in communicating about things that are very on the practical, uh, mundane, financial, things like that. And as I said before, we might get off to a bit of a sluggish start with the communications because it's Mercury and Taurus. Uh, some people might even be experiencing a bit of a brain fog during this time. Uh, if that's you and you need to clear your head, get out in nature, you know, that, that can help. Uh, take some walks, okay, to just kind of clear your energy and reset things and, and try to get more clear within yourself about what you want to say and what decisions you want to make. But also bear in mind that, you know, from the first through the fourth, Saturn is going to be squaring Mercury. So this is kind of another thing that is maybe holding the communications back a bit, hindering them. Or making it so that when people do finally open up, the tone is, you know, very serious. Which, again, there's a time and a place for everything, right? Um, on the downside, there could be tension, okay? There could be tension going on with these serious communications. Now, on the 4th, with Saturn going retrograde in Aquarius till October 22nd, we are looking at a period of restructuring over the next four to five months, which, frankly... I feel has a lot more to do with topics that I will discuss in part two and three having to do with, you know, the financial system and corporations and governments and things like that. But this might actually express itself through, you know, on an individual level through us restructuring aspects of our social lives, maybe the way that we're communicating online with social media, because Aquarius is a lot about, socializing and social media but Saturn being present there might also relate to how how it is that we're rethinking or reconsidering our relationship with those in authority which is Saturn and this could also be a time of reevaluating long-term goals and responsibilities so yes you know we might again be talking about career and financial goals but perhaps maybe it's goals having to do with your family very likely as we are getting 
further into this month into more Cancerian energy, where there will be an increasing focus on this. And then well into, you know, July with the lunar energy, we're getting into some Capricorn energy where security is becoming a big issue, being responsible, reaching the goals that we need to. Like I said, this is not just uh, this month energy. It's over the next four to five months, but it starts off this month with us really looking at perhaps changing our approach to our relationship with others on a peer level and others in terms of uh, on an authority level. But if you want to know more about this, I will, I will definitely be talking a lot more extensively about this in part two and three. Moving on to the 11th, Venus will be conjunct in Uranus in Taurus. So this unfortunately could have some destabilizing influence in relationships. The, the upside of it is that whatever instability gets revealed at that time is really highlighting and showing and revealing to you what you need to let go of, maybe limiting behaviors or habits that are sabotaging positive change. This could be a really good time for considering how to better nourish yourself and others on an emotional and material level. I would like to say as a challenge um, during this time, consider finding new ways to enjoy yourself in a healthy way, you know, in a soul nourishing way, um, in a way that connects you to beauty, to nature, to sensuality, okay? But I wanna give you a hint here that perhaps the new way is something that is more practical and simple than what you had previously envisioned. Yes, and I'm saying this in light of the current difficulties with the economy and everything that's going on in the world. It might be that the changes you make to take better care of yourself and enjoy your life more have to do with making some very down-to-earth changes. It might have to do with simplicity. Okay, on the 13th, Mercury and Gemini will bring about some heightened communications until July 5th. And so again, if there have been problems in relationships, um, particularly having to do with communications, this is another time frame where things could kind of lighten up, ease up, improve a bit. Just be careful with a lot of distractions going on at this time. And people maybe having a head knowledge, but not a heart knowledge. There's this surfacey, oh, well, I know, but do you really know? Do you really have it in you that kind of know that you know that you know? Or do you just think you know? This superficiality of knowledge, okay? Be aware of that type of stuff going on. My advice is uh, try to look deeper during this time of the 13th. Look beyond the surface of things, right? And watch out for like nervous energy and anxiety and vacillating back and forth, you know, on stuff. Like what is really going on? Try to search yourself as to what this is signaling because, you know, there could be a tendency not to look into those things when perhaps that's exactly what's needed. Now on the 14th, we have a full moon in Sagittarius. I don't think this is gonna be too difficult. I think this is gonna be a lot more light and fluffy than you know the the full moon that we had uh in may right with that lunar eclipse in scorpio cheap stuff i mean look i was even doing well with it i went live on that that night but then i was just totally exhausted and drained the next day so and i and i've heard a lot of people say that that full moon last month was very draining very exhausting um but this month of june with the full moon in sagittarius um while the sun is in Gemini, well, I think the spotlight is just simply going to be put on, well, what do you know versus the moon and Sag illum illuminating what you believe. And so, yes, there could be some ending, some culmination. Uh, and that that is the case with all full moons, okay? Um, but not all endings are bad, right? Uh, sometimes they're can completions, successful completions of things, right? So, um, yeah, something could be ending, right? But definitely in Sagittarius, Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. So I, I just feel more of a lighthearted release with this it is quite possible. Um, but yeah, maybe you are ending something that you were enthusiastic about, or perhaps you were exploring options that you're no longer exploring anymore because you've, you've, some facts have been highlighted and now you're getting some kind of finality to, well, I, I believed or I had hoped or I had wished for this, but the facts are telling me this thing over here, so I'm going to bring that to a close. Uh, that's generally the energy, right? I mean, depending on where it's transiting your chart, 
we could go even more specific. And like I said, I'll go live on the 14th again, God willing, and do tarot to help you guys navigate those energies a little bit better while we're there in it. Um, the people most affected by this will probably be the mutable signs, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, Pisces. And also during the time of this full moon, well, it will be trying Saturn retrograde in Aquarius. So it's kind of another energy here telling me this is not going to be very upsetting or disruptive. Um, it, it, the Saturn will have, Saturn trining this is going to have a stabilizing effect. Yes, it might be a sobering effect for some of you. It might be you coming to this realization of, well, this is how it is for now. And additionally, the full moon is going to be squaring Neptune. So again, if I were to look at difficulties, maybe with Saturn there, there might be some sobriety, seriousness to it. With the square involving Neptune, perhaps there's a lack of clarity for some people or a lack of groundedness of it again. Maybe, maybe you weren't clear. Maybe you weren't grounded, but Saturn is there bringing you back down to Earth, and that is the sobering aspect of it. Nevertheless, I think in Sagittarius, this is not going to be so hard to swallow. Maybe not what you want to, but it's not going to be so heavy, okay? Whatever revelations come out during this time, they, it might cause you to release or take a break from something that you had been previously pursuing, it might have to do with certain goals that, again, it's kind of this not now or not in light of this information or not in this way given this raised awareness, right? So the positive of this is even if that happens, um, it is going to help you to open up to better options or figure out figuring out better timing for your current options. It's kind of this, this feeling of, well, I don't know how to get more progress on this right now. So I'll put this on the back burner type of energy. I will talk more about this, like I said, um, in part two with career and money, because I do feel that for many of you, this will affect a lot of what people are doing in terms of trying to get progress with their lives in general, financially, career wise. And I think also in the world at large, it's going to affect people maybe taking another look at what they believe to be true with global events, which are all impacting us at an individual level, as much as we try not to be about politics, politics is about us, right? So I'll talk more about it there. Moving on to the 18th or the 19th, we've got Venus and Taurus squaring Saturn and Aquarius. So this is yet another layer of energy bringing about some challenges with people getting what they want in terms of what they value in relationships and with resources. And on the 21st, with the sun in Cancer till July 22nd, this is giving a very protective influence and it's causing us more collectively to focus on matters having to do with home, family, sense of belonging. It is also giving more of a focus on feminine, nurturing energy, emotional security issues. It's bringing us also more in tune with the lunar energies that I've mentioned and that are also coming up by the end of the month. It's giving support in helping us to form stronger emotional ties with others in our relationships. Just be careful during cancer season of reclusiveness and dependency issues. For example, I just over the last, I'd say week, I've been seeing reports on social media, people talking amongst themselves about how they know someone who is still stuck in March 2020, if you know what I'm talking about. They, have, they know people who have been homebound, haven't seen their friends and family in over a year, despite being fully vexed. And a lot of these people, you know, I've heard, and I've heard like one person say, well, what is going on with these people is like they're living in a, a parallel reality. They're so enmeshed. They're so invested in this official narrative, this false paradigm that's been constructed from March 2020. They're still in it. They haven't evolved out of it. And they're having trouble letting go of it and getting on with their lives. So perhaps that full moon in Sagittarius on the 14th will help with this. 
unfortunately, there are a lot of energies indicating that others are simply going to get sucked into the next scaredemic, which we've already got, which I can't talk about on here. But that is refocusing their unresolved fears, insecurities, vulnerabilities, which Sun and Cancer will definitely shine a light on. Um, that is getting refocused on the next new thing, the next scaredemic, okay, the next plandemic. I'm calling it the money pox, by the way. And if you are with YouTube and you are a moderator, I just said money pox. Uh, that's all I said. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. Um, 22nd, we have Venus and Gemini until July 17th. Okay, so this is where we get into some heightened sapiosexual energy, okay, where people are very attracted to intelligence, right, where smart is sexy. And a lot of bonding is likely to happen through conversations during this time. Uh, people, you know, getting more in tune with their inner social butterfly. This is awesome. And um, maybe having some healthy debates, hopefully. Yeah, having those quality conversations about what you believe versus the facts. Hello. <laughs> also, this could bring about a desire for travel and learning. Um, and, and those are positive things people you know, are going to want to get more involved in those things. So great time to meet new people, get out, especially if you are dating, um, if you get invited to stuff, fantastic time um, to take them up on the offer or invite them yourself because, you know, it could go quite well, quite swimmingly, you know, where, um, you know, these get togethers over meals could just go so well that you forget to eat. Yeah. And, and it is an energy where play overcomes practicalities. Um, so let's say that you're going to work out, um, you know, like that's no fun. Grab a friend, go out on a nature trail, you know, enjoy yourself, <laughs> breathe in that fresh air. <laughs> and so the only caution I want to give you on this energy though, during this time is, you know, with health issues. So I want to say, you know, when you look at body astrology, Venus and Gemini, this can indicate health issues related to skin conditions, specifically on the arms and hands or respiratory issues that, you know, I can't even talk about on here. But as I said before, I will be talking a lot more extensively on BitChute and Odyssey about it. So join me there if you want to know more about that. Now on the 28th, Neptune retrograde in Pisces till December 3rd. This is five months. I'm telling you, it's about to start slowing down. Um, and, you know, with Neptune going retrograde, we're looking back at things that we wanted and wished for and hoped for. But because it's retrograde, well, that gets kind of put on hold or something starts stagnating. And it could be a time of indecision, unfortunately. But the positive of this is that through that time of not seeing very clearly the way forward on those matters, um, we become more self-aware. Yes, there might be a feeling of being let down, that things are not progressing as quickly or in the way that you want or as clearly, that there's some kind of uncertainties going on. Yet, through this kind of meandering and re-examining, perhaps a better path opens up for you. Also, this is a time when we can deal with our own projections that we're putting onto others in relationships, right? Versus, say, for example, who a person is versus who we want to believe they are or who they want us to believe they are <laughs> or who we need them to be versus who they're going to be at the end of the day, you know? Just be aware uh, during this time with this energy, Neptune, retrograde, and Pisces, beware of people having mysterious or unexplained illnesses with a myriad of symptoms related to the immune system. Gee, I wonder what that might be about. I wonder what might have prompted that situation to have a sudden increase of these incidents over the last two years. I wonder what that is. But, you know, I tell you what I do know for sure. I can't talk about it on here. <laughs> but we're going to talk about it on Bitch Shoot and Odyssey. Okay. Finally, that same day on the 28th, uh, we've got the new moon in Cancer. And that is illuminating emotional needs, uh, the need for emotional comfort, the need for emotional security. It's also a time when a lot of home-related projects may kick off for you, um, or you may start to take action on enhancing your home, 
you might make efforts to enhance your home over the next two weeks. Those who are most impacted will likely be the cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. If you like this relationship content and you want more of it, remember I'm going live on the full moon and the new moon. And so make sure that you are subscribed and you've activated the bell for notifications so that you're notified when I go live. And if you want to know more about, you know, the rest of the report that's over on BitChute and Odyssey, I'm going to give you a sneak peek of the content. Part two, having to do with career and money. Well, let me say this very generally speaking again, lots of restructuring going on with the financial system and considering how on an individual level that's impacting you and how you maybe need to restructure your personal finances to better manage your responsibilities over the next five months. This is big. And also figuring out how do you live comfortably and securely given all the insecurity. That's that North Node in Uranus and Taurus that's really bringing that about. And finally, lots of critical thinking and analysis with the Gemini energy this month where we're having to identify sources of stability and instability in our lives so that we can act accordingly. Now, the hot topics I'm going to be bringing up in that segment will have to do with food shortages, cost of living increases, job losses, relocations and thriving in these times of financial crisis, economic crisis. If you want to know about the world at large, generally speaking, uh, there's going to be a lot of news and conversations coming up. I think with all the, the Gemini and lunar energy of this month, which is forcing a reckoning of the facts against the blind faith and the beliefs that a lot of people have had over the last two years that are just not holding up under the, the reckoning of truth that a lot of people are having to deal with right now dealing with yeah what you wanted to believe versus what clearly is okay neptune retrograde and pisces is bringing this up so we're all over the next few months with these retrogrades definitely neptune retrograde and pisces having to cut through illusions to the truth that's very big and reevaluating deception and having to consider alternative perceptions and this this could get very emotional i'm not going to lie to you because you know with all the cancerian energy that we've got as the month progresses uh, these, this could bring about a lot of sensitivities in people, triggering a lot of insecurities, but these are all arising for a positive resolution. The hot topics that I'm going to be discussing on that segment, too hot for YouTube, World Economic Forum Reset, Global Economic Reset, the upcoming selections. Did you hear me, YouTube? I said selections, selections. That's all I said. <laughs> okay. Warfare, bio-warfare, censorship, and we will talk about also the sick care system and the latest scaredemic. So make sure that you are connecting with me um, on those alternative platforms. I will have the links for them pinned in the comments down below. So um, make sure you check that co content as soon as it comes out. And thanks for watching to the end. Y'all have a great month. Be blessed.